Hi, this is Misha, and apologies, I have a cold today. I'll do my best. <laughs> Last year, we looked at Argentinian military handguns, and then a couple of months back, we looked specifically at the high power that was made at the uh, FMAP, the DGFM factory. And now I thought we would look at the 1927 Sistema Colt. The reason we're looking at it, last year those guns were loners, and now they've been traded into the shop. Kind of figured it would happen eventually. So here we have a typical military production from the FMAP factory. This was for the Argentinian Navy, it's in 45 ACP. And for comparison on the table, I brought out a few guns. I have a World War I production Colt. 1911. This is the original 1911. I have a World War II production, Remington Rand 1911 A1. And again, just for comparison, I brought out another Argentinian 45 ACP. This is the Ballister Molina. It'll have its own video, and it was also in last year's kind of overarching video. So, the 1911 in Argentina. Let's begin with this. As early as 1914, the Argentinian government, mostly the military, but also the police, started purchasing commercial 1911 model pistols from Colt. And they would finally type classify these as the Modelo 1916 and 1916. Initial orders would be quite small, about 2,000, but they would buy a few more, at least until World War I began. Obviously, when the war started, Colt's production all had to go to the American government and Argentina was kind of left with what it had. Now these early guns that it bought from Colt would have had the royal blue finish, double diamond wood grips, and typical 1911 features such as the straight flat mainspring housing, the small beaver tail, the large spur hammer, the small sights, the flat long trigger, we have a video on the 1911s, so you can look at that for more details. But yeah, the early 1911s in Argentina, the 1916s, would just be purchased from Colt. Well, that war, World War I, really showed them how tied they were to foreign arms production. So in 1923, the Argentinian government signed new laws trying to make the military more self-sufficient and independent. This would be establishing new factories to produce anything from engines to battleships to airplanes to automobiles and other cars. And yes, eventually small arms factories, although it was a relatively low priority. In the meanwhile, while this was getting up and running, in 1927, Argentina would purchase another 10,000 pistols from Colt in America, and these would be of the newer 1911A1 pattern, and they would be designated in Argentina as the Model 1927. They would be very similar to this gun, except they would have the blued finish, and they would have wood grips. They would still have the checkered arched mainspring housing, the longer beaver tail, the slightly larger sights, the more recessed and rounded trigger. And yes, they would, they would purchase these in 1927, or at least sign the agreement, and Colt would deliver them. Mostly they would produce them in 1928, and they would deliver them throughout that year and the next. Now part of this agreement was also for Argentina to begin licensed production. Like I said, the military, the government was trying to be more independent. So the, Colt agreed to help them establish a production line in Argentina, and they would provide pretty much everything, uh, tooling, blueprints, some material. Now, some machinery would also be obtained from 
companies in Germany, and Colt would help them set it up and install it. They would also have advisors down there in the early days to get production up and running. And that's where this gun here comes from. Now the first Argentinian manufactured Model 1927s actually wouldn't be produced at the uh, at the Domingo, Domingo Matthew factory, the FMAP factory. They would be produced at Esteban de Luca in Buenos Aires. And they would start to set up that factory in 1928. I'm not exactly sure when it was up and running, but probably the late 20s, early 30s. And it would be producing guns until about 1942. Now taking the original 10,000 1927s made in America by Colt. They would add at the Esteban Luca factory another 14,000. So we have 24,000 plus some older guns purchased directly from the USA before World War I. And they would also be purchasing mostly for police use some guns from Colt throughout the 30s. And these would just come off straight off their commercial production line of course. But then World War II began. The Esteban Luca factory really wasn't located and wasn't quite large enough for the kind of production that Argentina was wanting. Now after more important factories had been established, around 1936, a new factory in Rosario that we know today is FMAP or just FM was established. And it was basically, it was named uh, Domingo Matthew after a uh, revolutionary from Argentina. And beginning in 1943, they started to set up production for the new model 1927 there. And by 1945, the first pistols were coming off the production line. And from that time until 1966, they would build just under 88,500. So we have the original 10,000 plus the original 14,000. Then we have 88,500. So we have over 100,000 essentially Argentine copies of the 1911A1. On top of that, we have another about 11,000 Colt 1911s that have been acquired in small batches over the years. Now a lot of these would go to police. Many would also go to export and other government agencies. The army would be a large purchaser of course. Also the navy would acquire about 6200 and the fledgling Argentinian Air Force would require about 4200. Now these guns were virtual clones of the A1. Originally they would have a blued finish. It was more of a black oxide blue, so kind of the Colt wartime blue as opposed to a royal blue. They would retain the larger hammer of the original 1911. Now this was really done because the 1927 was a very early pattern A1. But otherwise, we have A1 features. We have the rounded and shorter trigger that's checkered. We have the scallops on the frame. We have the slightly larger sights. Or originally, these guns would be coming from the factory with wood grips, checkered wood. Later, they would go to black or dark brown hard rubber. We have an arched mainspring housing with lanyard loop. We feed from GI style seven shot mags. Typical grip safety, typical manual safety, slide serrations, very standard. There are only a few differences, mostly relating to production. As I said, the finish was black oxide as opposed to more of a commercial blue. Also, the way they checkered was more of a dimpling style versus the Colt pattern. 
The grips are slightly different. And a little bit of the angling on the hammer and the safety are different. Again, just artifacts from the manufacturing process particular to Argentina. Now, some people claim that these are made from softer steel, yada yada. I'm not going to get into that because sources are contradictory. Within reason, these are very GI parts compatible with American ones, but keeping in mind the 1911 was a bit of a hand-fitted gun no matter where it was made. So with that in mind, these were mil-spec, American GI style. And by and large, they seem to be very good guns. They gave Argentina a sidearm that it could produce itself. And they saw considerable military service. Now, as, as the ones would go through service and be worn out, they could be parkerized during a refurb program. The Navy especially did this. And they were still very much in service by the time of the Falklands War, which had been 1982. After then, they were surplused out, and many wound up in America. And to be fair, a lot of them by this point were in pretty rough condition. They had been used, and also the storage conditions weren't great. A lot of times the grips had been severely, severely deteriorated. Also, the finish was very well worn off. But they were also quite affordable, so a lot of people use the Argentinian M1927 as kind of a base gun, an affordable way to get a Colt pattern without actually paying Colt prices. For quite a long time, these were just four or five hundred dollars. Today, they've finally gone up, but they still aren't anywhere close to an American World War II or World War I gun. Now, I brought out the Baluster Molina because this was a gun that was in service alongside the 1927. Now, it's going to have its own video, so we're not going to go much into it today. But I will say this was an alternative made in Argentina as well. It was designed to be a little cheaper and easier to mass produce. And it is not parts compatible, for the most part, with American guns. But it has its own very interesting story, being in production from the late 30s through the early 50s, and made in very large numbers in and of itself. So definitely check out that video. I think you'll find it quite interesting. But yeah, for today, we're just talking about this guy here. A neat gun. If you find one in a shop and the price is right, and you're wanting a shooter grade 1911 with some military pedigree, I highly recommend it. The hammer is very smooth. It all moves very well. It feels nice and strong. It's made of good quality steel. You will find uh, quite a few of these sporterized or refinished just because of... Um, how a lot of them came into the country quite rough. But, yeah, just something to keep in mind, be aware of. Well, that's about it. It was an Argentinian military gun. And really one of their first domestically produced handguns. Like I said, the early ones were produced at Buenos Aires. In the later and larger number were produced at Rosario, a factory we know for producing many other guns, including the FAL and the High Power. Quite a famous, quite a large factory. It's now out of business today, but it produced very heavily throughout the 50s and through the early 90s in Argentina. Very nice quality guns. Well, if you'd like to share your own Model 1927s, we'd love to hear about them in the comments. If you have any questions, also feel free to post them and we'll do our best to answer them. If you like the video, we'd appreciate it if you click like. And if you'd like to help support us, please click on the link and check out our Patreon page. This is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.